TFL EV is brought to you by Flow Charger, maker of reliable, high-quality charging stations for your electric vehicle. Mitsubishi says their 2023 Outlander PHEV can go up to 38 miles on a charge. We have guys that need cheeseburgers, and it's over 40 miles away. We're going to try to do it all using the battery. Nathan, I have a really giant cable for you. Okay. <laughs> Jeez, this thing's unwieldy. And it's cold. Chatamo, my friends. The invention of tomorrow that's going away today. Essentially, so, Nissan Products Mitsubishi, which is part of Nissan Products now, are the only ones who use these pretty much now. But this is 50 kilowatt of charging power, which is That's good. the maximum output, but really it's 49 and essentially 43 in many cases as well. So hopefully we're gonna get 49. All right, dude, we got it plugged in. The charging is initiated. What's uh, going on? Yeah, after several t uh, tries. Look at this. 18 kilowatt charge speed. We plugged in at 57%. We're at 62% now. Okay, does it have an estimate? No, it, it did for a second there and then it went away. So I don't, uh, there we go, standard charge is 62%. Touch to return. 68 minutes, minutes left. left until 80%. 68 minutes no, left. No, 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 that's not right. So here's the thing. It's cap the car is capable of up to 50, and the charger is capable of up to 50 kilowatt. We have a 20 kilowatt hour battery total. Yes. Which means, in theory, should take less than 30 minutes, you know? It okay. should be fairly quick. Especially, at, well, we charge it at 50%, so it yes. should only take a few minutes. All right, so here's the screen you found in the car. Mm-hmm. I'm not happy about it. It's showing one hour to go to max. Uh, but I'm gonna start messing around with this thing and see if there's a way to tell it that I want more power coming in because it can do more. So when you when this happens when, when you're charging, right? Uh -huh. It could be two things. It could be the vehicle's issue, right? With the battery, maybe that's too hot or too cold. Or it could be the charger. Or it could be the charger. I think in this case it could be the charger because our vehicle, you know, it's a brand new Mitsubishi, so we should be all all good. So this Outlander plug-in hybrid EV. It's kind of a unique animal, isn't it? In many ways it is. Now, first of all, they did build one before, but that one was only a five passenger. This one comes only as a seven passenger vehicle. That's cool. It's all, one of the few in its class that does that and provides all wheel drive. It has a lot of unique stuff going on. So it's got a gasoline engine, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's it, got electric power. Mm -hmm. It's got 20 kilowatt hours of battery. Mm, but what's the total ten. driving range? You can get up to 420 miles range, this is according to Mitsubishi, okay? okay? Uh, but if you just use the battery alone, then you can go up to 38 miles. Which is what we're here to find out, right? If, is that actually real world friendly in the winter time? Yeah, it is cold outside, so yeah. it's definitely not gonna do it any favors. The platform is based on the Nissan Rogue. It shares some components with the Nissan Rogue. Okay. Mitsubishi and Nissan are partners now, and so a lot of their stuff is cross-pollinated. But this vehicle has a really unique drive system. And part of that is the rear end. So it doesn't have a drive shaft that runs from the engine to the rear end to a diff, right? Okay. It has an electric motor, which is 100 kilowatt motor, which is a lot. Which is a lot that's of power. A power yeah. That's yeah. a very powerful motor. And it has its own gear set okay. in there. And so that gives the rear wheels power when needed. And then it uses the super handling, uh, it's called super all wheel control system, SWAC. And <laughs> they've had different versions of that name for years. They have nothing to do with each other, by the way. Yeah. Some of them are mechanical, some of them aren't. This one's kind of half and half. But what it will allow this vehicle to do is send power to the rear wheels as needed to get it through some nasty stuff. And actually, Roman's done the video with this vehicle in, I think, some dirt. And it worked really well. Well, Mitsubishi has huge amount of uh, all-wheel drive heritage oh, and yeah. credibility mm -hmm. with all their cars and SUVs. So um, it's pretty good to see that they're also including this all-wheel drive control here in the plug-in. Right, and with the fact that it has a fast charger and it has seven seats and it has all-wheel drive, uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a vehicle anywhere near this price, even though this is really pricey, uh, that has all of that. 
available. Well, it starts at uh, just under 40K. Mm -hmm. This one is fully luxed out, right? Right, so this one comes in just about $51,000. That's a lot of dough for a vehicle like this, but at the same time, you're getting a lot for your money. You're getting a lot of tech for your money, and probably one of the best interiors I've seen inside of a Mitsubishi. All right, so let's get an update on our charging rate. We are at 90% and charging at six kilowatts, and it's been 33 minutes, and we gained about 33% battery, so it's 1% per minute, so we, our fast charging experience has been has not been good, but we think it's um, a lot to do with the grid and not as much to do with the car itself. So I think we're gonna call it and get on the road. So Nathan, are you okay with calling it at ninety percent? Yeah, ninety percent should be fine. Let's. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just basically see what the car says in terms of range and see if we can match that range. Okay, let's get on the road. So it has EV only. It says Eco EV. Oh wait, look, it says 38 miles already with 91%. Ha, so it wants to go further. All right, we'll see what happens. We're resetting our trip meter. Okay. There we go. There, zero miles, five seconds, 38 miles, according to the uh, estimator on the vehicle. So let's, let's go. All right, away we go. Just dropped the 37, by the way. So first, I would say the charging experience for fast charging did not work today. No, I'm willing to blame the charger itself, though. I don't think it was the uh, car. Uh, it looked like everybody was going low at that one. We've selected EV only, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll be using electricity alone. And here I think is where plug-in hybrids are really, because it's either the best of both worlds or the, the worst, worst of, of both. both worlds. And here's the best of both worlds, right? If you live in a big city, for example, like Denver, New York City, Chicago, and you want to enter the city and run around the electricity, right? Uh -huh. Should I make a right? Yes, you can do that. But if you want to go long distance, let's say from Dem Denver to Albuquerque, you can do that anytime on gasoline. So I think it combines both of those capabilities quite well. Yeah, I mean, the range on this thing is pretty impressive. 420 miles is pretty good. Yeah, Take let's go through here, yeah. So we're doing a mixed loop. Our ultimate distance, like Nathan, you said, uh, is about 42 miles. Uh -huh. And but I think a mixed loop will also be kind of beneficial for electricity because it's stop and go. You know, the good thing about this vehicle is it has regenerative braking and we should be able to get a little bit of extra distance with the regenerative braking in traffic. Okay, so that's- B0. So it's B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. Okay. All right, let's try B5 like the most aggressive. Yeah, let's see what happens. Hey dude, I, I see our destination right there out the window. Yeah, far out. And uh, we've gone almost 22 miles like we expected to. Look at this, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour is actually fairly efficient for a large SUV. Yeah, I mean, this is, remember, not an all-electric vehicle, so it's lugging around an engine and a transmission, a whole bunch of other stuff that normally wouldn't be on an electric vehicle. So, so far it's proving to be really efficient, and it's running, I don't know, kind of better than I expected, wouldn't you say? Well, do you feel like you have a lack of power? Or no, there's no lack of power. It tugs at the leash, and I think with that 100 kilowatt motor in the back especially yeah it just gets up and goes well the battery like we said is relatively small like if it was all electric of course the battery would be way bigger mm -hmm. but i look at the specs and this phev outlander weighs around 46 to 4700 pounds which is reasonable for a large suv actually yeah well it's not a large suv it's a mid-size I would okay say. okay but it's, it is three rows is this my turn yes um we are, this is not brought to you by In-N-Out Burger. 
but it, we're getting in and out in yeah. Colorado. And we're bringing some home for the crew as well, or else yes. they will have horrible things happen to us. Except it took us longer to charge, though the crew is really waiting. <laughs> They're not happy. And that's not the vehicle's fault. I blame that on the charger. All right, let's get the, the burgers. And uh, hopefully we can make most of our way home on the, on the electricity. All right. All right. So according to this, I believe we have 14 miles left. Hold on, give her a sec. Let me chime. There it is, yep, 13 miles. 13. Well, if we hyper mile-ish, we could get most of the way back. I think we can get most of the way back. We're not gonna get all the way back. Okay, let's go. Okay, my friends, so we have two miles remaining and we've gone 32.6 miles. So it looks like the original estimate wasn't far off, right? It's not bad at all, actually. And also, considering that we started with 90%, not 100%, this is still quite a good result. Yes, and at no point in time did this vehicle struggle or anything else. Uh, I've been driving it regular. I've been maintaining the speed limit, and I haven't been flooring it, to be honest with you. But at the same time, I haven't been babying it, really. I've just been driving it. So... It's it's working exceptionally well. Uh, 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. That's according yeah. to the vehicle. So it got a little bit better, and I think it has to do with the terrain we're going over. Right, right we, now we're going downhill. We're doing more downhill than we were going the opposite direction, which is probably why we're able to stretch out the miles a little bit more of this. We're still we're still in EV mode. I've got one mile left, according to this. So a couple of interesting notes that I wanted to bring up about driving this. Yeah. You can dial in this mode that feels like one pedal mode, but it's not actual one pedal mode. For one thing, you won't come to a halt by removing your foot from the accelerator. You'll almost come to a halt, but then you still have to use the brakes. I think it is actuated by the brakes and it just creates resistance. Mm -hmm. So I don't, there's no real difference between driving the one pedal mode and just driving it regular in uh, eco mode in terms of how much regain, regen you get as you're driving. So that's a notable thing. And you control that, by the way, by using the steering wheel paddles. Yeah, and I also want to add to this by saying, we mentioned the best of both worlds, right? Because you have ability of driving electric only Which or, or gasoline long distance, right? Yep. Uh, but the worst of both worlds, well, let's, let's also mention the flip side, right? This vehicle is, a little bit, is more expensive than a non-plug-in hybrid. Indeed. Right, because you're paying for the gas engine, the electric motors, and the battery, so you're paying for all those components. And then you could argue, well, how reliable can it be, right? Because electric motors are generally reliable. Yeah. The gasoline motor, well, the, you know, we'll have to wait and see, right? Now, there's good news, which is it's been proven over the years, especially by Toyota, but by other automakers as well, that hybrids tend to be very reliable and the gas engines in them are reliable. Do you know why? Why? Because they're not strained quite as much as your average gasoline engine. They work like a generator sometimes, and sometimes electric motors are easing up on the strain on the gas engine. Zero miles electric left. Although so the engine's 34.4 uh, miles we went. On a 90% charge. Yes. That's pretty damn good. Yep, so there you see it, our final result off of this cheeseburger run. By the way, if you're wondering about cheeseburgers, <laughs> um, we have them safely tucked away in the back right there with seat belts. So the cheeseburgers are safe. Correct, Amundo. It's still in electric mode, even though it's not showing any more miles left, by the way. The gas engine hasn't kicked on yet. I, I haven't heard it. Oh, if, if I floor, it? A, well, no, it's still zero RPM. Let me see if it will do it now. Oh, there it goes. Battery charge low. Okay, that makes sense. All right. There it is. So, yes. Yep, the engine's on. Aha. Uh -huh. I can see RPM. So, at the final result, dude, um, I think the claim that they've made about 38 miles and 100% charge, I think we just verified it. We went 34 and a half miles on 90% charge. I want to bring up one more thing real quick, and that is 
a lot of you people out there are like, well, 38 miles is nothing. That's that's a really short range. You'd be right. However, uh, when you look at my situation, where I live, and one of my kids, where they went to school, it was a 12-mile round trip. And then maybe if you're doing grocery stop, shopping or whatever or going to work, you can combine that and still come home on nothing but EV power. And that's something that a lot of people need to keep in mind, that you can actually do that and not use much if any gasoline over a very long period of time and that is huge because it can be very cheap to plug in at home and recharge and that's important yeah and if you are doing that i wonder if this system is set up in a way where it will fire up the gasoline engine once every so often just to keep it you know alive as they, well. they all have to all hybrids have to do something to cycle fluids and everything else through the system to make sure everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing well now i can hear the engine for sure oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we got a gas engine again all right success um except our charging experience wasn't that great no no i once again i do not blame the car for that <laughs>